and if we would all rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. Um, first of all, uh, we would like to have Richard and Kathy step down, and Jackie Coy will come up and swear them in to the school board. <laughs> So now we can officially welcome Richard and Kathy um, to the school board, and we have no more vacant seats up here. Um, first of all, uh, we do have one adjustment to the agenda, and we will move unfinished business um, up after communications. And for approval of the October school board minutes. Does anyone have um, any comments or any questions about those minutes? And they are approved. Okay. Um, and, and now we can move to comments um, from our high school students, Rebecca and Michael. I'm Michael Iris. I'm a Keeblesmith High School senior. And um, fall, uh, the fall sports season has come to an end, and golf was the only sport with a state championship. But the girls cr cross country uh, came close to winning the state championship, and Elise Mooney Roberts placed first overall in the states and second in the New Englands. Um, the Cape Math team came in second to Falmouth and had the most people out of any school there including Falmouth, which requires students to go to math meets. <laughs> uh, on a more personal note, my coach, uh, Mick Marr, has retired from coaching. He's been coaching for six unpaid years, and his presence will greatly be missed. Nick Welch and Elliot Cohen were named to the all-conference team for Class C, and Elliot has ran over 1,000 yards in uh, running, and uh, I think 128 carries. Uh, mock trial had its first me uh, meet, and it's now 3-0. Uh, we hope to win another state championship with them. Uh, theater has a performance next week uh, called Bet Noir, which I, I think translates as the Black Beast. And um, it's next week, and maybe Rebecca will say more about that. And in the MEAs, um, the school uh, did better than the state averages, which was really good. And Report cards came out, and many people made the uh, honor roll. So that's it.
Hi, I'm Rebecca Taylor. Um, much of my notes are similar to Mike's, but um, the first quarter report cards, along with the MEA results, were handed out on Monday and received with varying degrees of relief and dismay. Uh, students seem busy, yet trying to keep up with schoolwork has been a little easier since fall sports ended. However, most winter season practices begin on the 17th. The Student Advisory Council, or SAC, has divided into subcommittees, which have met and are making progress with plans for the year. For example, the Substance Committee's goal is to create a student-written policy that will be acceptable to students' administration, and the Academic Committee will be taking a bold step in examining the merits and disadvantages to the current class structuring of AP, Honors, CP, and Diploma leveling, and how these designations affect the students. A school-wide meeting of the SAC will occur tomorrow. In other news, the first issue of the school paper, The Cape Insight, is out and was snapped up anxiously. Articles discussed everything from army recruiting in schools, the ocean environment, and possession by consumption laws. As Mike said, the theater program has three shows being performed later this month, collectively called uh, Bete Noir. Nearly half of the senior class applied early to a college. Uh, the, mic, the mock trial team went three and out at a tournament yesterday with strong cases on both prosecution and defense. Students seem involved in current events and the uh, election ballot questions were discussed in the hallways and in the classroom. A government class even conducted an exit poll at the elections and students attended a Howard Dean rally in Saco. Um, about 20 students will be going to a democratic debate in New Hampshire as part of a connection with uh, USA Today. Many were also pleased to hear that, uh, that the renovations to the high school were passed from the local referendum, and several students are extremely excited about a possible opportunity to go to <coughs> France in February on an exchange program. All in all, the year so far has been busy and productive. Thank you. Thank you, Rebecca. Um, and now the middle school, and I see Kevin. Hi, I'm Kevin Johnson, and Nora couldn't attend tonight for some reason. And uh, our first thing is the dance. Our first dance had a very big turnout, which is very good, and we made a lot of money. And the chaperones also said it was went very well, and they enjoyed doing it. So chaperoning. Our first social was last Friday, and that also went very well. The students that I saw were having fun. The laptops for the seventh graders, the seventh grade team said it was going, they were going very well for them and they are enjoying them. Fall sports ended and boys basketball j just started. There's three complete teams, seventh grade, eighth grade, and expansion, and they're all doing very well. The Sally Foster sales ended last week, I think, and I think that turned out very well. And cookie dough sales started next week, last week, and that should go well. Report cards come out next Friday, or grades end next Friday. It's, yeah, they come out later. The yearbooks went on sale a couple weeks ago, and hopefully that will go well. And this year we are also participating in the WMGX food drive again, which is just a food drive that a radio station does. And our goal is 1,500 items, and at the moment we're just brainstorming ideas to get people involved. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Are there any questions or comments for Kevin? No. Thank you, Kevin. And now we can move on to communications. The only thing I'd like to, to, to mention is that we have a letter from the New England Association of Schools and Colleges, and thankfully we're, we will be able to finally address um, the issues that you see in that letter uh, regarding uh, the possibility of the high school being placed on warning because the ADA issues have, in case the ADA issues were not addressed, but I think with the recent passing of the referendum, we'll finally be able to put this issue to rest. Um, and on behalf of the school board, I would like to um, thank the community um, for the support for our schools. Um, we're very lucky to, to live in a town where education is so highly valued and the facilities in which our children spend a major part of their day are cared for. Our youngest children, the kindergartners, 
and their, and their teachers will now be part of a collaborative learning environment with all elementary age children. For the first time in many years, both teachers and students will share the same facility from kindergarten through the fourth grade. Our high school building will have major infrastructure repairs to stop the leaky roofs, remove asbestos, add school-wide telephones and intercoms, rewire electrical outlets for new technology programs, and install a sprinkler system. Science classrooms will be upgraded and ready for 21st century learning, and our building will be better organized with departments in the same areas. The high school will be ADA compliant, as Tom had mentioned, and structurally able to meet the needs of accessibility for all students. Our cafeteria will be enlarged so that every student will be able to eat lunch sitting at a table and not on a floor in the hallway. Additionally, the renovated cafeteria will better accommodate community um, functions. There, were, there are so many people who had volunteered a great amount of time to uh, review and assess our current facilities. A special thank you to the facility committee members who started the ball rolling in January of 2000 and the building advisory committee who made the in initial recommendations to the school board. We have so many other people who have also volunteered a tremendous amount of time and effort, such as the Cape Citizen Group, as well as all of our school administrators, teachers, and our very own um, I-team of eighth graders. Um, they all worked diligently to inform and educate the community regarding um, each of these projects. Uh, thank everyone for supporting our children and our schools by having the vision to make the necessary improvements to our educational facilities for the foreseeable future. Um, and do we have comments from the public? We don't tonight, right? Okay. Then um, we would like to um, take care of some unfinished business, a consideration of a request um, from David Perry regarding um, his uh, trip this year to um, France. Now, do we need to hear from David, or are we just taking Well, we already vote? heard from him um, last month, so yes. I think at this point, any other questions? And David, if you, has anything else, any other things you want to add about what's happened since the last time you were here? Good evening. Um, I'm David Peary. I'm a French teacher at the high school for the new board members. Um, I have sought, I'm seeking permission to take a group of students for a three-week exchange trip to France. We'll be spending three weeks in a town about the size of Cape Elizabeth on the coast, the Atlantic coast, uh, halfway down the country, just beneath Brittany, at the mouth of the Loire River. And then they will be coming back to visit us in the month of April for two and a half weeks. Um, they'll be, the students will be living with uh, French families during that time. And they will come back, and uh, the French students will come back and stay with the family of the um, person they have hosted. During that time, they'll, we'll visit Paris. We will um, also be able to attend, attend school and see what uh, French educational life is like and see what life is like uh, inside a French family. Since I last saw you, I have met with um, a large group of interested students. Um, those who want to go on the trip have given me a deposit. I have 15 students at this point who are interested in going on the trip. I am trying to finalize with my colleague in France how many students they have on their side. Um, they've been interrupted. They had a 10-day vacation at the end of October, and they just had a long weekend because of um, Veterans, well, it's not Veterans Day, it's Armistice Day in France. Um, so they had a long weekend. So they are not quite as far along the way as we are, but I hope to hear from them shortly as to how many students um, they could go with. Initially, I was going to take a group of 10 to 12 students, um, but I've my group is a bit larger, and I'm considering taking up to 14 students on the trip. So right now I have students who are interested, and I'm just waiting from the French, or my French counterparts as to um, how many students they'll have so we can pair everyone up and get going. 
Any other questions? Do you have dates yet, David? Tentative dates I just got today are students coming, uh, French students coming April 5th and leaving April 20th. The 20th? The 20th of April. That's Tuesday the 20th. And again, those are tentative dates as they haven't made their reservations yet because they don't have their full group yet. And do you have dates for Tentative February? dates for us leaving um, February 12th and returning March 1st. Did you say, have you taken deposits already? I have taken trip? deposits. At this point, everything is refundable because I haven't sent them on to our travel agency yet. Mm -hmm. And our travel agency is being very cooperative in understanding that there's a lot being juggled right now, trying to get everything together. And just so the, the, for, the, for the new members, what you are approving is the time, time off from school. For me. For you, right. Yes. And for the students to miss school without without penalty. Right. And that is, what, two days? One day? Well, no, this is this um, change. Seven days. Seven days. It goes over the vacation. Yes. Right. Day before vacation, vacation, week after vacation, we're getting back Monday the 1st. Okay. If there are no other comments or questions, um, then can we have a motion? A motion. Yep. I move that we authorize the time off for the teacher and students to go on a exchange trip to France. Okay, a second. Second. Again. All those in favor? Seven. Zero. Merci beaucoup. <laughs> bon voyage. I need a handful of French euros for my collection. <laughs> Great. Now we can move on to the superintendent's report. Just a few items to share. Uh, first on state funding, um, just so you are aware, um, and we did talk about this in the finance committee, and um, when I stated the plan in the worst case scenario, which is level funding, that would be level funding from the state, which means less for us. So the. There has been talk before the referendum that the, that the governor was planning on level funding this year, which would mean anywhere between, anywhere up to a $700,000 loss for us. So although it's level funding at the state level, it's not level funding in Cape Elizabeth. Um, so that's something we need to keep in mind as we move forward with the budget. Um, the future direction planning initiative uh, will be moving now that the referendum is, is complete. Um, and really begin to, to put together our plan for the future, the revisions to our plan, um, take a look at our strategic goals and the data that was generated at our August workshop, um, whether we need to add strategic goals, uh, action plans, um, really keeping the same focus, but just updating that plan to get us through now 2009. Um, the Education Foundation, um, I I think you probably received in the mail the uh, Cape Elizabeth Education Foundation newsletter, which is um, a nice document giving a little background about the foundation. I've also included in your packet a copy of that, but it was sent out, I think, to all residents in the community. Uh, it talks a lot about the upcoming events, um, the phonathon that is planned, that will be planned shortly, and just all the overall accomplishments that the group has made over the last two years, and I think that's, that's quite significant. It is still their goal um, to, um, to create an endowment uh, for the Cape Elizabeth schools in the, to the tune of anywhere from one to two million dollars. Uh, that may take a, a while, but it's still a goal. Um, lastly, um, we will be meeting next week um, uh, regarding the beginning of our budget process. Um, it will be obviously a difficult year. We have a lot on our plate. Um, and some very hard decisions need to be made. And I think what's, what we feel good about is the support that we did get at the referendum, and I, I really see that as a statement about the support people in Cape Elizabeth have for the schools, um, but also um, as a school board um, and as a school community, we need to be aware of the fiscal constraints that are in the community. So we'll begin that process next week. Okay, thank you. 
Um, and now we can move on to the principal's reports. Nancy, middle school. Good evening. I'd like to welcome Mr. West and Mrs. Ray to the board. And um, just to let you know, as any board members are welcome to, if you're not familiar with the middle school, come on over any day. We're always there. And you're welcome to wander about and visit, chat with us, and uh, find out a little bit more about middle level education. So welcome. Last week, Bev Bisbee and Gary Lenoy and I attended a meeting for a regional meeting on the laptops in the MILTI program. And we have these throughout the time and throughout the time of this project that's been going on since last year. One of the things that they talked about at this meeting is to remind us all that this year when the eighth graders take the MEAs in March, they will be taking them on their laptops. This will be pretty exciting um, for us. And although MEA is all ready to go, the state information system isn't all intact yet. So there will be some paperwork for the students to fill out as well, too. So it will be kind of that bridging year of some of it will be paper pencil and some of it will be on the laptops. But their response to the questions and the test items, at least as we heard right up until last Tuesday, they will be online and they will be going on their laptops. To get ready for this, the state is field testing this in several schools. They're doing a round of schools in December. They'll fix those glitches. Then they're doing another round of schools in February and fix those glitches. And then we should be ready for our taking the test, which we believe will start on March 1st. We haven't gotten that firm date from them, but that's what we're thinking. Anyway, so we'll be ready for that. Um, we're excited about it. They have told us that some of the schools they chose as test sites were schools who had had network problems so that they can anticipate any small glitch that we might have. So it will be another adventure in laptop learning, and we'll be part of that, so we'll do our best. Right now at the middle school, in fact, this afternoon after I got out of a meeting, I was met by three students who wanted to show me a plan for National Mix It Up Day. This is our second year of participating in Mix It Up Day, and it will happen on November 18th, which is next Tuesday. The idea is that as students come into lunch, instead of sitting where you always sit, that you sort of mix it up and sit with different people, and that you have conversations. And just get to meet people perhaps you didn't know as well as the other people. Um, we have a very energized civil rights team working on this, as I said. Um, they are excited, they have some great plans, and um, I think they will have a successful day, and I'm sure from this venture we'll learn even how to make it more successful in another year. Uh, this will be, our, as I said, our second time participating in this event. Kevin mentioned to you that our trimester ends on November 21st. For many of us in the building, it's hard to imagine that a third of the year has almost gone by. The report cards will not come out until um, I think, just right about the next board meeting time, December 9th is, I believe, when they come out, um, giving people time to average the grades and to get all of that paperwork done. Looking to the future, we are also busy planning our career day for January 22nd. For any board members who would like to join us that day, just to roam around the middle school in the morning from about 8 to 9.30, we have different sessions that the 7th and 8th graders go to. And Gail Schmader, our volunteer coordinator, works with Rick Madden to plan this. Without Gail's work and Rick's input, it wouldn't be a success. But it has always been a great success, and we have a tremendous number of community volunteers who come in and present to our students about those careers and really the love of finding something that you enjoy doing is what you should find for a career. And that's the message that they get no matter where they go. So that is on January 22nd, um, and we do have a snow date of January 27th. We're also, as I look at Anne, we are also in the midst, and Anne is one of our chairs for the Wonder Years. We are planning that for March 5th. We've mentioned this before, but also another date for any board members who might like to drop in into middle school that day. It is a day, it's designed as a student conference day, and we set it up with keynote speakers and different sessions for the students to go to. And the keynote speakers this time we think are going to be pretty 
motivating and interactive, we hope, to some degree for the students, and they each will get to go to three sessions. Just as we as adults go to conferences, this will be an in-school conference day for our students, something that we're trying to do every other year. The call has gone out for people who are interested in participating in our play this year, Bye Bye Birdie, and for any parents who are listening, if they have a question about that, they could contact Evan Solander. He is our drama director for this year, and they are beginning to gather information about who might be interested in being part of the Bye Bye Birdie production. And there are not only speaking parts, but stage parts and also many crew parts that need to be filled for that. Finally, today, um, several of the middle school teachers, quite a few of them got together to wish bon voyage to Margaret Welch, who is off to Japan for a three-week course of study. I believe she leaves on, well, it's either Saturday or Sunday. I know she goes this week, coming weekend, and she will be returning on December 8th and have many things to share with all of us, I'm sure. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Nancy. Um, now we can move to Pine Cove. Kelly? It's about time. Good evening. Speaker, speaker. I know Tom is here, but he wasn't supposed to be here. So. Um, I'm taking Tom Eismeyer's place because he participated in a Pine Cove Parent Association book discussion tonight, and he wasn't sure when he would be done, so he asked me to speak. But he is here, but I'm still speaking. First, I'd like to welcome um, Mrs. Ray and Mr. West to the board, and we invite you to come to Pond Cove and visit us at any time and see what our earliest learners are doing. And I think you'll enjoy yourself. Um, first and foremost, I'd like to um, say that Pond Cove teachers and administrators are absolutely thrilled um, with the community's support of approving the referendum to build the kindergarten wing. So we are now very excited that we're going to do one big family under the same roof um, for the first time in many, many years and, know, and, and feel very happy that we don't need to worry about moving around anymore. Um, I, we also have some laptop news at Pond Cove. Uh, the Pond Cove Parents Association provided us with a very generous grant of $12,000 to purchase 12 laptop computers for our mobile um, computer lab. And the mobile lab is signed out by Pond Cove teachers, and once it's transported to classrooms, it's hooked up to be ready for student use. And the mobile app currently has a printer and a port for connecting to the internet. But until the PCPA grant, we only had enough computers to um, work with half of a class. So now we can work with a full class. And this is often, working with half class has often doubled the instructional time. And it's also made it very difficult for students to share, or half a class was ha going to have to do one activity while the other class worked on um, work with the lab, and that is no longer necessary. So we're very grateful to the PCPA. And just to give you an idea of some of the activities and some of the projects that um, that are done and implemented with the use of the mobile lab. Um, Teachers and students are able to engage in extensive research projects. Uh, they use word processing skills. They learn, also learn how to pull graphics from the web to be used in projects and writing assignments. And again, um, you know, many other creative things that we're not usually able to do with a full class, such as slideshows and iMovies. And so we're very excited now that we have a full <coughs> interactive cart that more teachers will get on board, and we can we can. We do not have to share the cart quite as much as we did before and, and have it divided up. So we're very, very thrilled with that grant. This week, Pankov is hosting author-illustrator Marcia Sewell. She's our visiting author and illustrator for the school year. And today and Friday, students and teachers um, were visiting with Marcia in the Media Center. She's meeting with groups of classes and explaining the ex exciting process of the research process that goes into creating her books. And in addition to the writing and illustrating process, she has really spoken to students about what goes be, what goes on behind the scenes in terms of making sure the accuracy for all the details in the book and the content that's related to it go in. So children have really loved um, being able to participate in that with her. She's also showed them the different art mediums that she uses and given examples. 
marie hayes, our art teacher, has also extended that her visit with us by working with some classes on piece taking a piece from one of her books and having the children mimic exactly what marcia sewell did as as far as the main character in that book did. i'm trying to get this straight because i wasn't in that class. but um and the children really enjoyed that her activities have this week are focusing around native americans and the pilgrims because two of her books people of the breaking day and the pilgrims of plymouth are two of her more popular books in the timely fashion of thanksgiving coming up um, has been very much thank for the students i was also asked to speak about my position as teacher leader and it's just too busy for me to go on and tell you right now so i can't um, put it all in, in um, one setting here but most recently i just returned from two outstanding conferences with four other teachers um, the first one being the annual fall conference of learning in the brain in Cambridge, Massachusetts, where we listened to neuroscientists speaking to educators about the latest research in um, helping learning impaired children and the recommended interventions that are research research based to that we can that, that are being recommended for use in the classroom. Um, and then dovetailing from that conference, we also attended a, an early literacy reading recovery conference in Providence, Rhode Island, Northeast Literacy Conference, liter Northeast Literacy for All Conference. And from there, we attended sessions and keynotes from the leaders in the field, again, um, connected to the latest research-based um, findings that are directly applicable to the needs that we have in our classroom currently. So we're excited to share that with faculty, and our plan is to share that during um, November 25th, the second day of our workshop days in November. And also, we hope to facilitate book discussions because there's many new publications out that we think would be helpful for teachers um, and obviously students. Okay, thank you, Kelly. Um, and now the high school, Jeff. I want to add, add um, my welcomes to Kathy Ray and to Richard West. Um, congratulations on becoming part of the school board. Look forward to working with you and getting to know you. Um, and also to echo Marie Prager's comments, thanking the community for the support uh, with the renovation projects. And my personal thanks to the people who are working behind the scenes to sort of work on that project. I mean, there's a lot of um, unsung heroes that are out there that, that really help uh, to build support and get information out about those, I think, very deserving projects. So thank you to that group very much. Um, we, uh, our report cards did just come out, and I just want to report a couple of interesting phenomena. I'm not sure why, how to explain these, but I, I'll offer one theory about one of them. We have, coming into this year, some of you, the board members, may know that we have for junior students, for our 11th graders, we have a program called freeze, which basically means that kids who earn honor roll status do not have to be assigned to study hall. They're required to be in the building, but they are responsible and accountable to themselves for the use of their time. So that's called freeze. And coming into the first quarter of this year, we had 50 juniors on freeze, and the remainder of the class was assigned to structured study halls. This quarter, we have by far the largest number of juniors and by substantial percentage, anyway, by far the largest percentage of students who's ever been on freeze, and that's 85 students out of a class of um, 120, something like that. Um, and Mr. Tinkham and I were sort of speculating on what the causes of that might be, and one of the changes that we made this year is we do have a more structured study hall setting um, than we've had in the past, and I think it's been a interesting motivation for some kids to really get their grades up so they can have that privilege and earn that free uh, opportunity. So we'll take motivation in any form we can possibly get it. Uh, it's a good thing. We also have, and this has nothing to do with study halls, we have the smallest ineligibility list I've ever seen it since I've been principal. I don't know what to attribute that to. Um, I have some thoughts about that, but it would be completely just speculation. Um, I want to offer congratulations to two senior students, Dan Clucci and Jacqueline Crane, who are two of the 
finalists in the state of Maine in, in the U.S. Senate Youth Program, and they're actually going through a final round of examinations by the end of this month uh, to see if they get the opportunity to go down to Washington and work in the United States Senate. Um, it's a, to have two students from one school to do that. I don't remember the exact numbers, but it's something like 20 across the state or something like that um, actually become finalists in that program. So that's a big percentage and a, and a real tribute to Dan Clucci and Jacqueline Crane, so I wanted to mention them. In addition to the Spain, the uh, French, France trip, we have leaving in two weeks, um, a trip going to Spain under the supervision of Angela Chapani and Allison Coulter, two of our Spanish teachers. Good number of kids going to that as well. Very exciting. We have a growing number of students taking the opportunity to be a part of our after-school homework support program, um, in part prompted by progress reports, first quarter grades, and that sort of stuff, parent requests, and, and we have a progress uh, process in place to sort of identify students who we think might benefit from uh, being in a more structured after-school homework support program, and that is working. And in case any board members get calls tonight, or if I get any calls tonight from parents about whatever's going out on the ocean with Cape Elizabeth high school students, we do have, I think it's 10 to 12 students in our PE adventure class who kayaked over. They may be in, en route right now from uh, Crescent Beach to Richmond Island. And that's with Mr. Shea and two of our teachers. The teachers are the nervous ones about this particular trip. But in the process, they are also going to be, Mr. Shea is coordinated with the Cape Rescue folks. And then a couple of other communities, rescue squads, got interested in being a part of this as well. So they're actually going to be simulating some ocean accidents on kayaks. So some of our kids are, for a period of time, going to be in reflective life vests in the water um, with rescue squad people going all over the place. And they're going to be having some simulated uh, emergency rescue things and that sort of stuff going on. So I thought I would alert you to that in case you get any phone calls about it. It is strictly a drill. It's the most well-planned exercise you could possibly imagine with some very well-trained professionals, but it's, and the kids are extremely excited about it. <laughs> it's the teachers and the principal who are nervous about it, but uh, it's well within Scott's, uh, Scott's, Scott's great experience with outdoor adventure type things and rescue things, so, and he's done a great job putting that together. It'll be a great experience for the kids. They're also camping out tonight as well, and then they're um, kayaking back tomorrow morning. Uh, should be quite an experience. Any questions? Okay. They have wetsuits. <laughs> oh, what what are you laughing at? <laughs> <laughs> just done look up there. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for sharing that. <laughs> I got your attention anyway. Right, yeah. No, do they have wetsuits? Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. They're very well supplied and they've got um, reflective vests and there's going to be so it's much. There's 47 Jeez. degrees in the water, they said yeah. this morning. Yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't want to be in that. <laughs> Parents all said yes. It really is well organized. So I oh, I know. Wow. I thought you might want to know. <laughs> Not an everyday occurrence. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Jeff. Murray, I just wanted to back up a minute to Kelly's comments. I just wanted to say that I've heard so many positive remarks when I've been at school about your position and how that's working, and I think that that speaks so much to taking a risk and trying, you know, to do things maybe a little bit differently and thinking about things in a different way. And it's just great to hear how well that's worked. So congratulations Thank you. for all of you. Fabulous job. And it's only opened my eyes more to what an incredible staff we have really here. <coughs> and, and incredible. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. 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 And, and now we can move on to committee reports. Um, the Finance Subcommittee, Elaine. Um, yes, the Finance Subcommittee met prior to this evening's uh, school board meeting. Um, we had uh, Keith Weatherby, our athletic director, uh, present uh, the newly uh, uh, designed financial reports that the school board has requested from the various athletic boosters and parent organizations throughout our school system. Um, we also had a report um, by Kevin, who is a representative uh, with the PATH uh, finance uh, work that they're doing, and we will be later considering their budget uh, for next year. Um, and we also did sign uh, a variety of warrants. 
Okay, thank you. Um, the policy subcommittee, Jennifer. Uh, the policy subcommittee met on Tuesday at noon, and um, we went over a couple of policies um, that we've been working on and have submitted for first reading tonight, which will be under new business. Okay. And the building committee, Elaine? Um, yes, um, the first, or actually at the second uh, meeting of the uh, town appointed building committee will be this Monday on November 17th um, at 7 o'clock. Uh, we had a um, uh, organizational meeting this morning uh, to set up the agenda, um, and we met with uh, Bob Howe of HKTA, uh, and we discussed some of the timelines for some of the things that are starting to happen and that will s happen quickly uh, after we get uh, things going. We also um, talked about the construction manager applications that Pauline is putting into the state and, of course, the timeline that will happen um, after that occurs uh, is approved by the state. So uh, things are starting to to happen. We have a lot of work ahead of us, and um, I look forward to our first meeting on Monday. Okay, thank you. Um, and now on to new business, um, consideration of the superintendent's recommendations for athletic fee positions. I'd rec like to recommend the following individuals uh, for athletic fee positions. At the middle school, Ben Putnam, eighth grade basketball, Terry Long, seventh grade boys basketball, Joe Doan, boys expansion basketball, Aaron Filio, boys expansion basketball, Michael Miller, middle school Nordic skiing, and at the high school, David Weatherby, assistant indoor track. Um, do we have a motion to accept this recommendation? I move that we accept the superintendent's recommendation as presented. Okay. Second. Second. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh -huh. um, are there two boys expansion basketball teams, or are they? Oh, no, they're sharing. They're sharing. Okay. Sharing. okay. Any other comments or questions? Okay. A second. Jennifer, all those in favor? Kevin? I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> Seven, zero. Okay, next, um, candidates uh, for appointment to the Community Services Advisory Board. Each year, the school board is asked to take a formal vote on the appointment of Community Services Advisory Board members and the two names that have been submitted are Judy Rowe and Sharon Roberts. Okay. Um, do we have a motion? Elaine? I move that we accept superintendent's uh, recommendations for the Community uh, Services Advisory Board. Okay. Are, are there any comments or questions? Judy, is this a reappointment yeah, of Judy? They okay. are um, able to serve two or three-year terms, this would be a second term for both of them. Okay. Um, a second? Jennifer? All those in favor? Seven, zero. Okay. Next on our list is the PATHS budget. <clears throat> I move that the Cape Elizabeth School Board um, Approved the expenditure of $54,362.20 as our portion of the pass cost for the uh, 2005 school year. Okay. And, I'm sorry, and direct that the superintendent convey that approval to the director of pass. Okay. Um, are there comments or questions? Again, that's the 2004-2005, right? Right. Okay. Sorry. Okay. Um, a second? Jennifer? All those in favor? 7-0. On past behalf, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, next we have two policies um, that have come to the board tonight for a first reading. Sure. Um, they should be in your packet. The um, first one is board member conflict of interest, BCB, and the second is <coughs> nepotism, BCC. But my, before any discussion, um, for the benefit of the new board members, um, policies do come to the board um, for a first reading and then at least a second reading. More often than not, it is two readings. Um, the purpose of tonight um, is to bring these out to the, the school board for comment. Um, they will then go back to the policy committee for any revisions. Um, if there are other issues that you feel are important that um, don't come to mind this evening, uh, anytime during the next week, get, which, which you would please either get those comments to Jennifer or myself uh, so the policy committee can consider the revisions. Okay. Um, are, are there questions or concerns about the conflict of interest, Kevin? Um, down in just about the last paragraph, no member of the board may be involved in discussions or decisions with regard to personnel. Mm -hmm. if said employee or potential employee, and I think that we need to add ex-employee or former employee mm -hmm. yeah. based on our prior experience mm -hmm. with that type of a situation. Okay, anything else, Kathy? Christian, um, the policy subcommittee is comprised of who? Jennifer um, chairs it. Ann, and we need one more member. Usually there's three members. Kathy, Kathy, Kathy was on it, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and then the administrators. The administrators. Right, and the administrators. Now, I could be wrong, but I, um, I'm under the impression that school board is um, dictated in terms of state law and uh, I guess I'm wondering in terms of the changes that are here specifically the titles that are referenced down below um, I don't know if this has been reviewed by the board's attorney I assume maybe it has uh, maybe that's an incorrect assumption um, but I believe we are not meant to be adding or subtracting to state law as it governs school boards and some of the titles that are referenced down here, um, for instance, Title 30 was abolished in 1987. So I would like to move that this um, change be tabled until which time it can be reviewed by council uh, to be brought up to reflect the state laws. Is that from our old one or is that from it's probably the from MFMA the old, one? probably from the original probably still a legal reference to the doc that the original policy in 1992. So but just for your information you that, that um, the school board does have to abide by all state statute as far as policy is concerned, but can also create policy on anything they, they feel would benefit the school district as long as it doesn't, as long as it abides by state statute. Policies are not strictly state statute. As long as they are not in conflict with state statute, they're okay. So you're talking Title 30, not 38, right? Title 30 directly was abolished in 1987, according to the information I have. Because I've looked up the, the 1987, yes. Um, I, I looked up the titles that are all referenced here, um, and there's some other uh, potential uh, areas that are not correct. Um, but I am concerned that we are adding or subtracting to the law to, um, to really restrict ourselves. Like, for instance, if you read through uh, the sentence, uh, board members will recuse themselves from discussions when another relationship exists. It's a very broad statement that could cover any other relationship. For example, uh, I might have a problem with my neighbor uh, and my neighbor's son is going to be teaching a class at community services. Is that now a conflict of interest? And 
I believe conflict of interests have to be looked at on a case-by-case -case basis. Um, and if we try to put our hands around and too much identify what is or what is not a conflict of interest, we may be li limiting all of ourselves to vote when we are meant to be voting as board members. So I would like to have that. Well, you'd only have you. to recuse, your, recuse yourself if a discussion of, well, first of all, we don't discuss personnel really of community services, but using that example, you would only recuse yourself with the discussion not on community services in general. Somebody could, could make, the, um, make the discussion that voting on the budget, community services is part of the budget. So does that represent a conflict of interest? Um, I think we have to have, we, re, we need to have this reviewed probably by legal counsel. I assume we do right. have this reviewed by legal yeah, counsel. Um, and they would have, they should have picked up uh, some of the discrepancies with reference to the titles. Um, if you look at fourth paragraph down, references full-time employees. Well, um, I, am, I have the titles, but uh, I believe it may have been 20A, section 1002. Full-time employees are no longer considered full-time employees in the reference on that title. It's actually full-time employees, part-time employees, and volunteers. Um, that reference was changed in 1999. So somehow we've missed uh, in updating this particular policy, uh, some of the important parts. Can you say, say that again? Which, which, which has been changed, 20A or this? In the, needs... in the fourth um, okay. paragraph, mm -hmm. where it references uh, no member of the board or spouse right. of a member shall be employed as a full-time employee. Mm -hmm. um, it, ha it has been changed to include full-time employees, part-time employees, and volunteers that have a direct um, curriculum, uh, not like a volunteer that does a, a small side volunteer, but a volunteer that has a direct um, reference to um, specific curriculum. Well, it's a paid position. That's why we took that out of there, right? Well, there was a discussion about volunteers. Right. Um, well, my, and you think that's 20A what? I'm, I'm, I have to look up the title again, but I thought it was 20A in section 1002. Okay, that's down at the bottom. Right. What I'm saying is the document does not reflect mm -hmm. the current state law. I think my concern is that if, if there's any kind of legal references here, it's has far-reaching implications beyond just a citation. Um, these are personnel decisions. And I'm, I mean, I, I, I don't know the kind of information Kathy has, but I think if there's any potential for error with respect to legality associated with this board, then this should be pretty much stopped immediately and reconfigured so we're within line of any kind of um, state law. I'm, 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 I'm actually questioning, first of all, where, where this came from. I, I don't know the backdrop of this, but beyond that, is there a model that you're following? Well, we typically, we, we revise these, we just go through the policy book and keep updating I things see. and revising things. Um, we also get, whenever we do that, we get, um, depending on, how involved the policy is. Um, we might get samples from other towns um, just to see what they've doing. put in, you know, so you're not reinventing the wheel or right. you're going over things that you may not have thought of, you know, you might be brought to your attention. Um, and then we also get samples from Maine School Management Association, MSMA. Okay. And usually what we do is we take the one we have, if we have one, um, oftentimes we're notified by council that we need a new policy or to make sure that we have a certain type of policy. Um, 
when state law changes or whatever and so we will sit down with our old policy sometimes policies from other towns the m s m a policy and we sort of try to meld them what's important to us what's maybe not really applicable to us those sorts of things what's too general what do we want to be more specific on and so we sort of try to pick the one that's the most encompassing and the most pertinent to what how we want to direct the school department okay so that's how it's typically done then they'll we sort of hash that hash it out in policy committee and then we'll bring forward what we have I mean sometimes we have no changes we might have a typo or a change in language which is very very minor and sometimes we have big changes it really depends on you know the specific policy like there's not a lot of changes in bus stuff usually you know that kind of thing well I know which committee I don't want to sit on so that's number one but these they all go to council don't they Tom? Not necessarily no no it's very very expensive if we did that for every policy but a lot of times we send often times depending on the issue if in this particular case it sounds like we need to check some of the legal references but we don't always send it to council but my guess is that these are pulled from the old one and where is that that MRSA do we all it's main get one of those maybe by statute I mean it must be we have a statute book in the office and each one of the schools has one oh so I just so did you so you must have gone and looked that up and yes I did and what are the schools I mean I'm just so impressed that's great that you took the time to do that while you were talking I just I wanted to make sure that I did reference it correctly it is title 20a subchapter 1002 that I was just referencing when you were asking about the full time and it was um, changed in 1999 that an unemployee is considered um, it was changed to include full time part time and um, volunteers mm -hmm. <coughs> but that's why I was un under the impression that this is these are the laws that I we are meant to be governing ourselves with and if we um, if we go too far um, in trying to change um, adding or subtracting I think we run the risk of uh, you know preventing ourselves from functioning as a, a voting and governing board and you know in other words why bother rewriting and changing and adding subtracting when we have state statutes that are laid out fairly you know fairly clearly and tell us what we need to know I'm sorry. Well, then our all. I guess I don't concern, really understand. Oh, I, well, I guess I'll do it the hard way. My first concern is that as members of the Maine School Management Association, it's my impression that we're supposed to be notified of law changes that relate to school matters, whether it's personnel, students, or anything else. And I know that during my term as chair of that committee, that we did receive some of them and I just as a matter of fact just received one uh, this week relating to changes in title one um, which is relatively meaningless to me but obviously important but it came from the main school management association um, so I'm concerned um, and I believe we should be checking with MSMA to find out if our understanding still holds correctly other than that I would have uh, had Kathy not uh, picked up on this I would have suggested that both of these policies if they had not gone to Bruce Smith for legal review or to someone in his organization that they should be and that was that that came out of the policy committee that prior to the second reading that they would go to, to and that is just as a point of information uh, for our new members, typically how policy work goes is that the we take the shot at the first writing of it, um, and it goes out for first reading. And it's at that point that these questions, concerns, and objections are raised before this goes to for the second reading, so any changes can be made. 
and should the changes be substantial in nature, it would then revert to being a first reading again. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, so sometimes there are more than two total readings. If it's a really complex one or really uh, there's a lot of discussion about it, then sometimes there's a third reading or whatever. Okay. Elaine? Um, I have a, a question on, on that fourth, fourth paragraph, um, it's, and it's in the new additions that were added to it, that states that um, a board member may not, during the time the member serves on the board and for one year after the member ceases to serve on the board, be appointed to any civil office of profit or employment position which has been created or the compensation of which has been increased by the action of that board that while they were sitting on that board. Mm -hmm. So does that mean that pretty much almost if, if you assume that compensation has been increased for almost every position that the school... No, because that's contractual no. versus... It's unusual, and, and, and we checked this, that's directly from statute, and we checked this last year when we had a board member leave, um, and we did check with Drummond Woodson that, that this only means if the board took special action to increase the salary of a particular position, not just a unilateral... Oh, just a net, not something along that line, so that... So you're not creating a salary not, increase for something you think you're going to get the job. And you're not creating a new position for which right. a school board member would um, be a candidate for. Right. Okay. Thank you. On that same topic, if memory serves me right, that's also addressed in the town charter somewhere. And I don't have my charter with me tonight, but I, I think that the language is fairly similar. Mm -hmm. I haven't seen these statutes, I haven't read them, but maybe you could just help me to understand. I mean, within, even though we're guided by the statutes, right? But with, but, but under that, I mean, each school I would think would have their own, you can still have, write your own policy oh, yeah. yes. as long as you're following Actually, what that statute has set out mm -hmm. to ask you to do, right? I mean, so not every school doesn't have identical policies on every area. Right. Um, so then we will take the conflict mm -hmm. of interest and that will go back to for policy review. Well, they both will. Is there, are there any questions on the nepotism? Yes. Yes. Um, I guess on nepotism, I have a huge problem with both the first and second paragraph. Um, not the spirit and intent of what's being said, but mm -hmm. the placement, the policy placement of it. Um, what do you mean? Because Webster's defines nepotism as favoritism in hiring of a relative as its first and primary definition. Um, faculty do not hire students. I believe that we probably need to create a separate faculty conflict of interest policy. Okay. And I agree with, I, mm -hmm. I agree with the spirit and intent okay. of this, yeah. but as... You think it should be two separate? Yeah. Okay. Because we do have one for boards, mm -hmm. board members that are on the, you know, and the, I believe that there should be a member for, uh, I don't know to correct, uh, our employees, mm -hmm. and that goes administration, faculty, mm -hmm. and however we define ed techs and all the other staff mm -hmm. um, that work for the school department. Mm -hmm. okay. And Jennifer, I looked, when I was reading this, I had a, a similar kind of thing. I, I felt that we were combining Mm -hmm. different things into this one policy and it, okay. it just didn't That's a, feel okay. <coughs> Did you notice it elsewhere, just the two top paragraphs? So far as I can tell, it's just the two okay. top paragraphs. Mm -hmm. I mean, the, the rest of it um, is either fine or perhaps needs expansion and clarification. Okay. Um, but, it, you know, this 
as you well know, this is an issue we've been talking about forever. <laughs> yep. And, uh, Can, I might be repeating something here, but it, it's, I guess my concern was not so much, and we are addressing hiring, et cetera, mm -hmm. but it's more in the evaluation mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and who is doing the evaluating. I mean, if there is some sort of relationship um, between the evaluator and the employee, that there be a set up um, chain of uh, an alternative Evaluation in the, in the policy is that the I thought that was the appropriate place to have it, mm -hmm. and I don't think that's been addressed here. Mm -hmm. And I, I I would just say again that I don't believe that that's necessarily nepotism so much it, as it should be described as a conflict of or the appearance of a conflict of interest. Mm -hmm. okay. I mean I, I I think we should probably want to limit ourselves when we use the term nepotism to the hiring or appointment of personnel and depending upon the read of uh, the Title 20 and Title 20A that may extend to volunteers as well. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I, I really, I, I'm, I'm drawing a very, in my mind I have a very clear distinction between nepotism and and conflicts or the appearance of conflicts of interest. Okay. Because conflicts, you know, what one person perceives as a conflict of interest may not in fact be one, but if it has the appearance, it's a problem regardless. Mm -hmm. So, um, alternative provision, what's the um, um, I use the word chain of command, which sounds a little <laughs> harsh. <laughs> but um, well, well, an, alter, an alternative, alternative evaluation system. model. Okay. Um, okay. You know, maybe that can all. It, it can always be the next person. In line. You know, it can be right. that person's yeah. supervisor, no, no, be, or whatever yeah, it's determined to be. Yeah. Right. Okay. Um, so, And, and there was one in the third paragraph, actually, um, where it says, members of the immediate family except spouses employed by the school unit as the date, as of the date of policy adoption will be excluded from this policy. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure I understand what that means. I just kept It's a grandfather <laughs> clause. I, it's really from the old policy. Okay, so is it, it, is it relevant? I don't know if we have anybody. Any we kind of left it in because we were thinking we couldn't really think of anybody, but okay. Okay. but that doesn't mean it might not. I I understand right. I understand what you what you're saying, but I do think the language is a, a tad confusing because mm -hmm. uh, I wasn't sure whether or not we could hire my wife or what well, we had to well, fire we had her. We had to fire. <laughs> right. I'm not I'm not sure what it means. Well, we had to fire. Well, if, fire if, her. if, if, oh, fire her. Oh. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, she has threatened to kill me so she can get a job in the school, so. <laughs> so she threatens oh. to kill me quite often. Okay, so we will send <laughs> both of these back yeah. mm -hmm. to policy, um, and they will come back to us next month then? Mm hmm. Or however well, long it yeah. takes Much to rewrite. I'd like to make a suggestion. On, I, I think it's first. It's really laudable that you're even tackling this stuff, and this is this is tough stuff. But I, I think whenever any kind of legal reference is made, just to whoever it is, you have to consult. So then we're, we're bringing this with a sense of confidence and credibility mm -hmm. to the group. So then, you know, even though I wouldn't even know, well, I kind of knew the letters. I thought I did, but um, I just want to make sure that we're on target knowing what we're presenting to the community as far as the kind of policy we're advocating. Okay. Anything else? Okay. Um, then we can move on to um, consideration of an alternative delivery project application. And what this means is um, we 
have had to apply to the state to get permission to use a construction manager for the high school project and we need to take a vote tonight by the school board to authorize Pauline um, to process that or to put through that application to the state. Is that correct, Tom? Yes, basically. Okay. Yes, okay. So can we have a motion, um, Elaine? Um, I move that we authorize uh, Pauline Aportria and, and Tom Priscilla to submit an alternative delivery project application to the state for uh, approval of our high school project. Um, a second. Kevin? Any comments or questions? Okay. All those in favor? Seven zero. Okay. Um, and I think that concludes our meeting for tonight. Um, I will just mention the building committee, as Elaine had said, will be Monday, uh, November 17th, 7 o'clock here in the Jordan Conference Room. Our next school board workshop is next Tuesday, um, and it will be our initial discussion on the 2004-05 school budget. Policy subcommittee meeting Tuesday, December 2nd, here at 12 o'clock. Finance subcommittee next month, December 9th, uh, 6.30, and our regular school board meeting, uh, 7.30, immediately following. And that concludes our meeting for tonight.